right, and we are live. Uh, my name's Isaac. I am one of the co-founders at Pet Summits. Um, I'm the host of the Pet Care Report. Uh, the mission of this show is to connect pet parents with the world's leading pet experts and brands to discover the latest trends, innovations, and essential products for optimal pet care. Uh, today, we have uh, on our live 10 of the episode of, uh, of the Pet Care Report, a very special guest, the founder of the Pet Acoustics, Janet Marlowe. With July 4th just around the corner, as we know, this is one of the biggest times of the year. So many people will be out celebrating. However, the truth is most animal companions are frightened or even traumatized by fireworks. So today, Janet's going to walk us through what fireworks do to our pets, how to keep them calm, and how her music can actually help our pets calm during these uh, times. So welcome, Janet. Thank you so much, Isaac. I'm so thrilled to be here and to be able to talk on this very, very important subject, especially since we're right around the corner of July 4th. Yeah, exactly. And it was, you know, coming from Australia, something that we were then a big celebrations of New Year's and I was like, man, July 4th's coming up. I saw a few posts uh, about the fireworks and our, our, our pets, whether it be cats, dogs, um, you know, horses, we've been speaking about horses off air, uh, you know, the, the fireworks can really, uh, really affect them and cause uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of anxious, um, anxiousness. Um, can you, so can you quickly just walk us through, you know, what, um, explain us or how, why our pets get so anxious uh, mm -hmm. during, during the, the, the fireworks? Right. Well, um, you know, as a human being, you can feel the, the, the sound of fireworks yourself. So now take a dog, for example, that hears twice as much as we do, and a cat that he hears three times more than we do. Um, so this whole uh, world of theirs of acute hearing, we don't even experience. So we have to kind of think about it as our own body response to the fireworks and multiply it by a hundred. So what part of the, the, the um, dog or cat is the most affected by um, sound, their hearing? So the one thing that is simple to understand is that sound, which is invisible, is a pressure in the inner ear of, of our ears. Our ears are very similar to dogs and cats. It's a very similar biology. Um, and therefore, that pressure triggers behavior. Now, we think, oh, it's not going to kill us. We don't have to run away. Everything's going to be fine. Let's look at the colors. For them, it is a very intense experience. And animals have kind of two responses, fight or flight. So they will either move towards the sound or away from the sound. So when they're in our homes, um, hopefully they're in our homes when fireworks occur, um, that um, there are ways to modify that um, intensity for them, but they're going to still feel it. So you will often see a dog pant, pace, drool, walk around in a circle, try to hide. A cat will definitely be hiding. Um, and so how can we address that um, physiological response that puts them in this state, which is hypervigilance. So my company and my research um, has uh, fine-tuned um, the absolute sonic music level that puts an animal in a state of calm. Now I'm a composer, so what I do is I eliminate that high hypervigilant trigger level in the music and also in the sub-low frequency levels. So it's not in the music. Um, and so that's the important thing is to understand that there are certain sounds that go beyond a certain level that triggers hypervigilance, that fight or flight behavior. And it's all from the pressure in the ears. So, um, and also flashes of light can be very, very distressing to an animal. So I'm going to offer some um, seven tips for your uh, listeners. Um, I also want to express that fireworks. Um, now, it used to be in the old days, we used to go to the 
the, you know, the, the town square and it would be July 4th and in, there would be that one time then we would see the fireworks. But now you can buy fireworks anywhere and very often people live in neighborhoods where fireworks are going on in November or they're going on in, you know, different times of year and can be very, very close to where you live with your dog or cat. The fireworks not only have a intense sonic uh, damage to a dog or cat's ear pressure, um, but there, it's also poisonous and the residue of fireworks left on the ground, if your dog goes and sniffs it over the next day, and it can actually burn their muzzle. So fireworks are beautiful for humans, but I call it the big horrible for dogs and cats. We, um, I, cause I, I'm from New Zealand and when we, I'm pretty sure it's in November, we had Guy Fox day okay. and we were those annoying kids <laughs> with those fireworks and just, you know, I, I, I think it's changed now. I don't think you can get them, but like they're probably not the safest things as well. And yeah, like the, the amount of um, this is not something, you know, the, the leftover residue that would be just left around and then the dogs are licking because they can't, that's what they do. They, they <laughs> lick it up. And that's, that's, um, yeah, that's really interesting, you know, and I, yeah. I can look back now and think about how, the amount of times that our dogs would go hiding. And I was like, why are you hiding? It's because the, the, yeah. the, the sound, how did you come about this? Like, you know, you, I know you're a composer. And so that's a, a, a really interesting question that I'd like to know. Okay, well, uh, I'm fifth generation composer in my family. <laughs> so uh, that was my family business. And um, I uh, was, a, I'm a former jazz artist. I have my own radio station on Spotify, Janet Marla Radio, if anybody wants to hear my music. Um, but I've had a lot of dogs and cats through the years. And uh, every time I practice for a performance, my dogs and cats, no matter where they were in the house, they would come to my side and they would relax. And I could see them just releasing this, this bodily tension and just be totally soothed. And um, one day uh, my cat Osborne was severely injured and uh, I took him to the ICU and I went to sing to him for five days and unfortunately he passed. But after he passed, I. I really could not stop asking myself questions like, what is it about sound? What is it about music? What is it about dog and cat hearing that that just makes this sonic environment so soothing for them? Fast forward many years of research um, and testing um, and biometric studies, um, I learned that this that each animal has a specific comfort range in their hearing where that pressure in the ear does not exist and it releases their bodily tension and puts them in a state of calm. And um, so I invented species specific music. So I have music for dogs, cats, which is different, horses, which is different than dogs and cats, and birds yeah. also. Uh, and uh, so it's species specific and it is a very, um, I love what I do. Uh, and uh, has helped many, many animals. And so I developed a product uh, that, uh, different products that people can have this music, not just, I can't go to everybody's home and play the guitar. Um, so this is <laughs> that people can uh, put on easily and it's easily transportable. Can I show the, the, the product? Yeah, yes, yeah. please, yeah. So this is called Pet Tunes Canine. Oh, I gotta find the right spot here. Pet Tunes Canine, um, we have it for, Horses, horses, and birds. People can look at my website, um, and it's. We'll, put, we'll, we'll add the links. Uh, so if you send me the links, we'll add them the, at the at the end of this as well. Absolutely, it's all on petacoustics.com. Um, okay. So this is a, a Bluetooth speaker, and it's preloaded on an SD card. The music that is specific for canine hearing. And uh, it's, I designed it so that it is portable. So it's designed to be near your dog in your home, near a puppy crate, um, uh, during a thunderstorm, during fireworks. Uh, you can take it in the car. Um, many veterinarians uh, use this in their exam rooms, um, in their ICUs, in their post-op uh, for travel. 
uh, you know, dogs and cats, especially cats, hate to go into the car. Uh, and <laughs> the uh, you're you're smiling because you know that for a fact. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, they have motion. They have motion sickness. Um, and so uh, I've been uh, selling this pet tunes now for uh, since 2009. We are a global company. And I, I say I've helped a million pets with a million notes. Um, and it's, it's really uh, very, very exciting work. I continue to uh, refine it and research it. And uh, as I say, I'm the most biometrically proven music in the world. So it's very that's, exciting. That's um, amazing. Yeah. And I, and I, I know that's, you know, the the pets going into the vet clinic and the, the anxiety that they get in there so you mm -hmm. know i hope every vet clinic or you know, veterinarian watching this you know you just and they're not that expensive you know put it put it in your clinic to, to help your patients a lot um, just just a, a a dog and a pet parent walking into the lobby of a a, a pet hospital is very high anxiety producing. Not a, and then we also have to make sure not to be anxious ourselves because animals are energetic beings and they're feeling everything that we we go through. Everything. Yeah, we, yeah. we talk a lot about that and that the anxiety summit as well, which is um, which which is talking about how you know part of the problem is ourselves that we calm ourselves down. Yep. Uh, yeah. I guess, I, I guess it's coming into the next questions that we that we kind of have. You briefly touched on the um, the seven steps here. What are what are some steps that can help um, keep our pets calm during the uh, or especially during the fireworks? And then I guess they can use them any other time as well. Yeah, can be used for thunderstorms, which I know Australia has been having a lot of uh, severe thunderstorms, especially a few months ago. Um, so. Our first instinct is to um, pick up our pets uh, during, you know, their stress. And that's something that we should avoid doing. We need to kind of respect their space so that they don't have that extra, uh, you know, you're feeling stressed because we have to remain calm. That's one of the steps. We have to remain calm. Um, so it will increase the stress level of your dog or your cat if you pick them up. So that's step two, let them be. Um, try to anticipate the July 4th um, events or any time you think that that's going to be occurring um, and try to prepare a safe space for your dog or your cat. Um, for a cat, it may be uh, maybe a smaller room, but don't close them off into that because that may also cause them some stress. Um, so you want to also... Uh, have less light uh, put in some, you know, close your curtains, close your shades so there isn't that flashing light. Um, and um, I highly recommend putting some music on. Of course, I recommend my music because uh, Pet Tunes is designed to put your dog or cat in a state of calm. Um, and I would put uh, the music a little bit louder than normal so that it fills the room. Can we talk a little bit about radio and TV? Because radio and TV is not a therapy for a dog or a cat. I know a lot of people put radio on, um, which is more, it's usually on a, on a five foot countertop. Um, and the uh, radio does not have um, a projection of sound. So the sound goes, and if you do talk radio or even if you do music, um, it, it goes a certain distance and then it falls flat. The same thing with a TV. A TV is two-dimensional, um, a lot of flashing light. Um, some dogs are absolutely mad for TV. I mean, I've seen dogs that just, you know, they, they want you to change the channel. They like this program. They, they're very, <laughs> very, very visual but most dogs are not, um, most cats are not. Um, and again, it is not a, so the, the difference is, is that music can fill the room. Now music is an actual substance, right? It's a frequency, it's a decibel, it has, it has sound as a substance. Music fills an environment 360 degrees. That's yeah. why. That's why we love music. It we are fe we feel it 
for a dog or a cat, they feel it even greater. So dog TV and radio is not a therapy. It may make us feel good that we're putting it on to make them feel good, but is it really making them feel good? Um, so I do recommend music overall. I recommend pet tunes, canine and feline the best. Um, have lots of treats on hand so that your dog is can get, you know, they start with their nose. Everything is their nose, nose, eyes, ears. In the home, the ears is the most important. Outside, the nose is the most important. So if you have a lot of treats on hand, you can distract. Um, I would say you can distract a dog, not a cat. A cat will definitely, <laughs> once they've decided they're out of there, you're toast. So yeah. you're, yeah, wait. you cannot wait. take them out. And then, and I think uh, it's an important thing, um, is to uh, let your cat hide until the following morning. You really want to give them some time to, to bring their own stress level down. Um, and um, I'm a big uh, proponent of, uh, for my last tip, uh, to um, once the fireworks are, are over, because they really don't last that long, but the stress from them do last long. So um, take your dog and try just gently rest, rest your hand um, on your dog's uh, body and just let them feel the calm energy. And then do the same thing the following morning with your cats um, to just reconnect with them. Um, I also wanted to share, apart from the music in the pet tunes, box. Oh, I've got to really find how to get that camera right there. <laughs> I, I invented um, a sonic collar that is uh, specifically designed for dogs. It comes in small, medium, and large. And this is a music device. And I wanted to come, I invented this for my own dog, Rigby, who is an English Springer Spaniel. And Rigby was a year old and started, he could not handle the fireworks that was going on. Um, and our thunderstorms in our area. So I said, well, what's the best kind of invention that would be easy to help a dog accept some help during that situation? And I thought a collar device. So this is preloaded with um, specific music and uh, it's very low, it's perfect. You, the, it's perfect for a dog to hear in the back of their neck between their ears and it's called the ultra calmer. And uh, it's a collar device uh, with a music speaker. You can see the holes where the music comes out um, and you just turn it on. And uh, within a few minutes, they will circle and lay down. And this takes over their hearing rather than hearing the thunderstorms and the fireworks that's going on. What about when, uh, and I know this is off topic for the fireworks, just because I, I, I know, um, especially now that everyone's going back to work and the separation anxiety. Yeah. With your with your collar, people are away. Should they put that on their dog when they go out to work, or is it is that too much of the sound because you want that to have them at least like listening for for other for other things? Yeah, the th the uh, ultra calmer collar is really designed when you are there um, to clip on. Um, so the 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 pet tunes and the ultra calmer collar are really tandem products. Okay. So um, the, the pet tunes is for everyday use. Yeah. Uh, if you leave to go to work, you put this on for separation anxiety. There will be no separation anxiety. Um, and it's great for, for puppy training. Um, and it's, it becomes a, it's a trigger in their brain to say, oh, this, my environment feels safe and I'm, I can be confident to release stress. Um, it has a physiological uh, ability to uh, minimize their cortisol level. Yeah. And um, so that, but the ultra calmer is definitely for clip on, help them overcome uh, that immediate uh, panting, pacing, drooling that they, they, that dogs go through. Uh, and I guess like, have, do you have, or have you had any um, references and you know, treated over a million dogs? So I'm sure you have that with dogs that used to be, you know, aggressive and then with your sound, with your, with your sound device has, has helped them? Yes, because 
we do not calm an animal. They calm themselves. And we have to offer them an environment so that they can go through that process of feeling safe. Because um, in the wild, that's what their, their ability to hear acutely is their survival technique. I hear a sound, so I'm not, they don't, if it, if this, if it, they're using their nose, it's already too close to them to, for them to escape. So the hearing is such an important part of survival for animals. Um, and uh, so in the wild, they, they'll either go towards that sound or they will run away from that sound. Um, and nature has given them this incredible like cutoff point where they know, oh my God, that's not good, I'm out of here. Uh, mm. But in our homes, they still have that response. So it's our responsibility to provide um, a, a sonic environment so that they don't. And that's that's what I've been working on for the last 25 years is to be able to give them um, that that ability uh, to self gauge. And that that's really that's really important. So for dogs that have never like in rescue um, shelters that have never, ever known calm putting them in a sonic environment where they can feel, they can start to go through these layers of, oh yeah, I feel safe now. I feel safe. I can release. I can be who I am. That's why I I think, you know, I have to proudly say that a lot of veterinarians are now um, prescribing my pet tunes before giving them Prozac. Because yeah, wow. when we give them drugs, we're altering their personality. Mm. and music doesn't alter their personality. Like most of our, the experts that we work with uh, are either integrative or, or, or holistic. So the you know, medication is always the last, um, you know, means that they, that they will, that we use. And obviously there's times where, where, they, where, when they have to be ad, uh, administered, but that's you know, cool. that's, that, that's real. That, that's amazing that, that they're using that. Uh, and even, I guess it's also good because if, it also will get the more conventional veterinarians that aren't into the, all the different holistic uh, modalities or treatments, uh, or they don't believe in it uh, for for you know you know their reasons, which, which 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 can be quite valid as well. They the sound and the music is just like well yes, it's, and it's scientific, so then they can they they can get a mouse that, and then rather than first thing of, of treating is give, giving medication. Uh, which you know, which can also affect the gut health and lead to many, many, many other problems. Um, the 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 first um, thing that they'll go to is, is pet tunes, and you know, I hope every every um, shelter also starts to look at getting these because it's you know it's such a it's such a stressful uh, moment. Um, we well, mentioned you, you talked about uh, sonic environments. This goes, I guess, um, my last question for you today is like, why are sonic environments? Um, you know, a part of pet health and, and longer health for our pets? Well, because of just what you talked about is um, we know now that stress leads to illness, period. Um, yeah. And uh, for our precious, you know, fur babies that are, you know, are so acute in their senses, um, it, uh, it affects them greatly. Uh, you know, uh, you may have a cat, uh, who's been a, a buddy with his cat mate for, you know, 17 years and that cat passes away. Well, your cat will go through an emotional stress period of loss. Um, they're so sensitive, same thing with dogs. Um, and, uh, so, so the, so their health is, hearing is part of their health. And I've been really um, spending a lot of my time doing talks like this and uh, veterinary conferences, and I've written books to uh, really bring this, um, the importance of hearing health to the fore for, for pet parents and veterinarians. So I have a really fun um, offer uh, to for, for your audience who's listening to this, um, this uh, talk, 
which is uh, download a free decibel app, a decibel app. That's volume level. Um, and where can they where can they get that from? Any on the, on the, on the app store, okay. you can download a free decibel level, a decibel app, and that will show you um, just what volume level is happening in the in your room in your room in the restaurant you know in the car you know wherever you are taking your pet um or living with your pet and you can see so dogs and cats should be in an environment for calm between 60 and 80 decibels 60 and 80 decibels Sorry, uh, I'll just typing this down as I'm writing because I think it's great information so I can share to the group after this. Yeah, yeah, because, um, I mean, there there's also frequency apps. I mean, I'm a scientist, so I'm like, you know, I want to see what's going on in the world, you know, from the little things that go up and down. Um, but it's it's a lot of fun. But I they just think just between 60 and 80 decibels. Um, and uh, that is something that is is fun to do. Uh, and I, if I could get my hand on it, but you'll, you'll see what it's, you'll see what it's like. Um, and that way you can always determine when you go through the July 4th fireworks, take out the decibel reader and see how far it goes because you, you yourself will know when it goes to 90, it'll start to feel pressure in your own ear and you can respond, um, you'll be able to see how your dog or cat is responding. I always say, if you want to know where your pet is at, just follow their ears. Th that tells you everything. And the exciting thing about, um, and the, the, the final offering I want to say is that I developed a, a free, the first free home pet hearing test, which is on the Pet Acoustics website. And it takes one minute to go through with your pet. Uh, the, there's three different frequencies and you'll be able to know if your dog or cat responds to all of them or some of them or one of them. And you can, will get an immediate um, email uh, with all the results and you can share that with your veterinarian. Um, and it's, it's, it's just try the free home pet hearing test. See how well your dog or cat can hear in just one minute. And that's amazing. Um, yeah, because years ago it would be you jingle keys behind the dog's ear, and if it turned around, you know, you knew the dog had hearing. Um, but it's I've upped it up to a more finer um, evaluation uh, that's easy to use. Yeah, well, uh, that's um, that's amazing. I think that's really important. I, I'm just going to put that up there for everyone. Um, we had a question from Barbara. She, she'd like to get it. Um, uh, she'd like to get this product from before July fourth. So I, I guess she is in America. How long is your shipping times if people buy directly from from your site? Yeah, if they well, we've had a big run on my products uh, for the last week. Um, yeah. So uh, if she's in the U.S., um, she can get it uh, by uh, Friday. Uh, if she oh, well. if she orders tonight or tomorrow, um, yeah, she can get it by. We'll we'll get it to her before July fourth. Yeah, amazing. Um, well, th thank you so much, Janet. Um, really yeah. appreciate all of this information today. Um, I've you know, taken down some notes as well because I think it's really really great to share. I think it's great for every pet parent to, you know, at least download that the free guide so they can take to their veterinarian. And um, while, while our pets, uh, you know, we we love our animals and they go through uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of stress when we're when we're not at home. Um, you know, different different when there's you know sporting events going on. There's a party next door, which. Um, yeah, you know, if you live in the city, or you know, you're a younger, you know, I, I don't party as much as what I used to, but I definitely would have been annoying to to, to my neighbours, um, and my parents as well. So um, yeah, yeah, I, and, and the fireworks especially. So um, this is a lot of great information, and and how uh, and what 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 you said would which really stuck out to me is why we love music so much, is and it, it's so true, is because we feel it. 
you know, it's it's we we really feel it, and so do our pets, and they feel it at a, at a hundred times the level yes. uh, than than what we do. So you know, it's it's so important that we get this information out to um, you know to pet parents, yes. veterinarians, yeah. uh, rescue shelters. Uh, uh, like I, I don't know why every rescue shelter doesn't have this uh, in 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 their facility because you know that's not some it was very very tra- um, traumatic time time for them. So Ooh, thank you, you th- thank you again for coming on to thank you for for all all of the good work you're doing for for our pets um, and you. we we hope we hope to hear hear from you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.